Welcome to Hale Varsity Radio, the voice of Husker Nation. Insight, opinion, expertise, with the biggest and best names talking Nebraska across the state. Join the show on Twitter at Hale Varsity and at Schmitz underscore radio. Call in at 402-466-ESPN or 1-800-825-5865. Here's Chris Schmitz. Welcome to it. Great to be with you on a Monday. It's Hale Varsity Radio presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Let's get to it. Nebraska, Wisconsin week. Plenty of thoughts from Ohio State, Nebraska on Saturday. Had a good time with Real Red Reaction down in the rail yard. Still time for you today to jump in. Give us your assessments of Saturday. Real simple question, and it's been floating around. I'm anxious to hear your take. I've got one on what Saturday represented to you, the Nebraska fan. And you apply some of the good forward with 2020. Numbers to get in, 466-3776, 466-3776-800-825-5865. So, open phones here till about 420. And again, till the uh, top of the 5 o'clock hour, Jay Moore is going to join us. Blackshirt Husker NFLer Jay Moore, get his thoughts on uh, what he saw. As uh, Jay Bird's one of those guys that made a living in the trenches, anxious to get his take on on what he saw on both sides of it. Hour two, Mr. Blackshirt, Charlie McBride. Coach McBride uh, will no doubt have the the coach's eye and uh, some positives with what he took away from the defense. Uh, there's a picture Coach McBride showed me many, many years ago. I think he carries it in his wallet, and it's because Coach McBride used to coach at Wisconsin, uh, was there as the offensive line coach, and uh, came from Wisconsin to Nebraska in the late 70s. And there's a picture of him uh, talking to a 15-year-old Paul Christ. So uh, Uncle Charlie goes way back with Wisconsin. Uh, it'll be pretty interesting to get his thoughts moving forward. Not a lot to update-wise on, on Mr. Mertz other than Wisconsin is mom on their quarterback situation. You can email the show, Chris, at HaleVarsity.com and uh, give us a follow. Find us on Twitter, Schmidt underscore radio, Chris Schmidt, at Herbal Essence for Elijah Herbal. So, uh, the topic of a step forward. With the effort, with the, the, the ball game on Saturday, with the final score being 52 to 17. Things shifted quite a bit, didn't they? Four-minute mark, tied at 14. Uh, a great play by Stilly and JoJo to uh, to stop uh, a, a third down and, and three or third and goal. And Nebraska got a stop, got a hold in a big moment in the football game with things tied up. And then what happens? And it's been such a familiar sight and a familiar script for Nebraska football the last several years where, where you're close or things are going okay and then something goes horribly wrong and we talked about it last week that infamous snowball or the Indiana Jones giant bowling ball you're trying to get out of the way of get to your phone calls here in a second so that happened and what was 14 apiece turned into 24 14. Ohio State comes out, punches one in, and then the scoop and score was your death nail. What goes from 14 apiece turns into a, a 38 to, to 14 ball game. Nebraska goes down, gets three instead of seven. The, uh, the reenactment of the, uh, the dumb and dumber scene where Harry hits uh, Lauren Hawley two feet point blank with a snowball that's how hard and fast that 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 would be third down pass to to warner was could have should have would have been caught uh not 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 quite the right touch on that uh that throw so you settle for three things you would have felt a lot better as a nebraska fan if this thing would have stuck around 38 17 35 17 maybe you get another touchdown and it's it's a 31, 38 to, to 21 type deal. But it went from 
10 points to 17 points, even to three touchdowns to Ohio State getting the cover, Ohio State hanging half a hundred, and Nebraska fans that grew up loving this program in no way, shape, or form are going to go, well, that was okay. It was a step forward. I think as a whole, you can be ticked off because you had meltdowns. You had self-inflicted wounds. You had Ohio State doing what Ohio State does, and there was some frustration with a lot of Nebraska fans with uh, the, the lack of aggressiveness in the secondary. The other side of this, though, if you, you, can, you can cherry pick parts of this game, and if you want to be optimistic, say, you know, that looked a lot different and a lot better in some areas. Where do you get killed? against these top-tier programs on a big stage. What's wore you out for years as a Nebraska fan is getting the ball slammed down your throat by Wisconsin, by Iowa, by Minnesota last year, all right? And Ohio State does whatever the hell they want to people. Was it a step forward? Nebraska hung around. You were hoping that would be the case until – Nebraska stopped hanging around. Ohio State's that good. There's that much talent gap. You have to play perfect, Elijah, to keep this thing 10, 17, 21 points on a good day. But when you have a couple of turnovers, you have some penalties that derail drives. Penalties were the penalties. There's ref conspiracy talk out there that I I love. I get a kick out of. But so, no. Was it a step forward? I'm more confident when Nebraska plays Wisconsin this week. I'm more confident when Nebraska plays Iowa, when they get Minnesota, that they'll be better and won't get pushed around. That drives you nuts. It sucks to lose if you're a Nebraska fan, but how you lose hurts as bad as how much you lose by. And I think Nebraska's front seven and the offensive line were absolute bright spots. Doesn't make 52-17 to feel any better. But it's better than what it has been. I'm going to take that and run. I'm going to circle that and say this season can be pretty good, can be pretty successful because of what I was able to see on the lines of scrimmage. They got to clean a lot of stuff up. They got to get better. They got to find a downfield passing attack. They got to get a pass rush. There's a lot of things. It ain't great. They're not. They're not 11 and one knocking on a conference title door. I get that. But better than in the past years. I've seen some growth. And I've seen some growth in the strength and conditioning side of thing on the lines of scrimmage. 52 to 17, not okay, but they were better and they didn't get shoved around. I'll take that opening up against Ohio State. Yeah, uh, it's it, it's a game of positives and obviously the final score is all that really matters. But I, I took away a lot of positives from that game. If you take away uh, two of the turnovers from Nebraska and you add in a defensive stop in there. If, if, if. But, if there's if, right. but it, it's, a, it's a couple plays away. That game is closer to 24 34 as opposed to 52 17 uh could it have been a closer game a lot closer i believe mm-hmm. the final score is not indicative of how close the game was uh, but i think there's a lot of positives especially along the offensive line along the defensive line i mean aside from a couple of runs that got uh, that got popped off i think ohio state probably would have averaged under four yards per carry mm-hmm. uh, a couple big carries from justin fields really ballooned that but i think there's a lot of positives a lot of things that we were complaining about last year that were fixed in a game against probably the best team on the uh, the schedule all year. Well, and, and it'll be interesting to see if, if Ohio State's got to scramble fields the rest of the year or if Nebraska's run defense is, is better. And we'll see how well Ohio State runs moving forward. Kent, thanks for your patience. I know you've been on hold. Get us kicked off. Thanks for joining Hale Varsity. Go ahead. Hey, not a problem, guys. Hey, I was just listening to uh, Jay talking about just excitement and and Chris, you were talking about just, you know, we need to do this, we need to do that. And that's, you know, that's okay for, for the fans because I saw great uh, determination, great. They were having fun again. They were out there smacking kids around and having a good time. And, and I haven't seen that for years. So I was really encouraged on just the, just the you know, smashing guys in the mouth type of thing. Yeah, we're going to get better. Hey, that team is a hell of a team. That, that, that's, that's a given, you know, mm-hmm. starting out with those guys. Hey, that's all right. Uh, we're going to get better real fast, I believe. We just have kids that want to be out there and want to hit guys in the mouth. 
Ken, you're right. They played confident. They played fast. And yes. oh, they, they, were, they, they weren't true. tentative. They weren't tentative. And granted, man, we are – there's there's a section of the fan base, and God love them, because I get it. I mean, I totally get where, <laughs> dude, it's never okay to get 52 put up on you. Oh, I, no. I understand that. I understand that. That's not where I'm going. I'm just saying the look – it looked like okay. This is something you can work with, and, and I think you're right. The 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 fun factor, right? Uh, let's go, Denzel Washington here. Uh, football is fun. Well, it's fun when you're you know what you're doing and you're playing tough. And they didn't have any fear, and that was nice to see. I saw some speed too. I mean that that was that that's. I was like, woo! I got yeah. the tickle bumps going. I was like, what? I saw some guys backers, D line, DBs. Uh, no, I mean everybody. Besides good. kickers, but you know that, that's it's all right. Kicker thing. So fast, but hey, I just saw burst and willingness, and that is all you need to do. That's all you need to start everything rolling. And they they, they did play very confident. I wasn't saying you were you were. I think you were breaking it down for the fans to try to understand yeah. those numbers. But hey, you know what? Right now, we can't worry about the numbers at this very point. You know, just continue that. Having fun. I know those guys on the sidelines just frothing at the mouth, wanting to get in the game. Put me in, you know, get in there and show you, show your coach. Hey, don't take me off. Don't take me off. Ken, appreciate appreciate the call, brother. Thanks so you much bet. for jumping in, man. You know, Ken's Ken smiling and he's thinking about it the <clears throat> the right way. And and that's there's a lot of games, and you can pick a lot of Ohio State games. You can pick a lot of Wisconsin games. You can pick a lot of Iowa games. Where the, it's just been ass kickings, guys didn't want to be out there. In a lot of instances, you knew how it was going to go. And there wasn't enough Jack Daniels or Bloody Marys or vodka in the world for the fan base. A lot of those, a lot of those games where you're just getting steamrolled, and it and it didn't feel that way. And and maybe this is a, a complete overreaction, but I don't think Kent's wrong to say, "Hey, man, maybe this is the start." You're talking about the build, okay? You're talking about finally kind of turning that corner. That's what's so huge about Saturday. And you, you just played number three. You're getting number nine in town on Saturday. Full strength, half strength. Doesn't matter, dude. They got a bunch of just tough SOBs on both lines of scrimmage. That if they're down to the Wolfie at quarterback or or Mertz or whoever it is, Wisconsin's going to do their thing and they love it. Mm-hmm. And, and you got to respond and I think Nebraska's closer to maybe getting that breakthrough win. Maybe it's Saturday. And I think the, the way the feel is, as we talk Monday afternoon, man, there's a lot of people that say, if you can't beat Wisconsin with, num- with their third-team quarterback, potentially, or an offense that didn't look vintage, because there's got a lot of guys blocking and running the football in the NFL now for Wisconsin, that'll be very deflating. This thing's going to gonna pressure Cook all week. As far as the magnitude of the game, it, it it feels like okay, maybe Wisconsin's gettable. There's been a lot of feelings in past years, and it's not been the case. Yeah, see, my, my positive feelings from that game were that Nebraska is doing the little things that successful teams do to get wins. I saw offensive linemen one on one blocks, pancaking four and five stars. They were rolling some guys. Yeah. They were just absolutely going out Jergens there. Jurgens had a hell of a game. Making it personal against Ohio State D-linemen. And, and, and Hymas was so good, and Ben Hart played really well. Mm-hmm. And I also saw, not, not even to mention the offensive line, I saw receivers blocking 40 yards downfield. Mm-hmm. The one that stands out in my mind is Luke McCaffrey's running the first drive, and who's out there lead blocking for him 40 yards down the field, but the littlest guy in the field, Wandale Robinson. Yeah, Wandale's got a, got a guy engaged and, and moving him around. So, listen, there, there's, there's a, a lot of positives to take. The, the overall and ultimate negative is what it is, where it's 52 to 17. And just the, the tease factor, too, a little bit of, all right, you scored first. And I've not heard, and granted, it was a smaller crowd because of COVID restrictions in the rail yard. But, but people were out there bundled up watching on the cube. And the joy and roar you hear as you walk outside after that first touchdown, man, that was awesome. That was so cool to hear a fan base let loose and be joyous and have so much joy in their heart and their voice. And Nebraska looked incredible on that first drive. Got a big play for McCaffrey and Adrian looked sharp. 
they, they've rotated this quarterback thing really well. Both guys come in now. They got to take care of the football, given. But man, the thing that that is is frustrating is as good as there were with little things, the technique, the strength and conditioning, the holding your spot, the uh, the set and the edge, all the things that you've not done for a lot of years in the Big Ten. I mean, it's been six years, six seasons since you've had really high level offensive and defensive line play. Okay, um, so. You, you you saw some good things on Saturday, but far too few when you mix in the mistakes. The delay of game was a, a killer, uh, a, a false start, a hold, and that's just that's just one play to back you up five, and it killed. It absolutely killed drives, and you kind of just palm to forehead, slap yourself, going, man, why, right, why? But hopefully those things get eradicated. I'm anxious to see this, this this week one to two jump with Nebraska. Now, is Saturday a step forward? No, with the result. But it's okay to cherry pick and feel, feel positive about some of the areas your football team has been deficient in for a lot of years in these big games. We'll get some thoughts from Jay Moore, Blackshirt Husker, NFLer. Get his take on the lines of scrimmage. Jay Moore's next. It's Hale Varsity presented by the Nebraska Lottery. All-State, two-year starter, and rush in for the Big Red, and NFL vet. He's Dudeness or uh, Duder or, uh, you know, El Duderino if you're not into the whole brevity thing. It's Blackshirt Jay Moore with Hale Varsity Radio. All right, El Duderino is with us. It's Blackshirt Husker NFL or Jay Moore at Moore 44 Get his podcast downloaded with uh, Hale Varsity and Heard At. Uh, More to it is the name of it. And Spotify or iTunes or Google Play. Blackshirt, Jay, what would you think Saturday? Um, you know, I – it was – there was a lot of good. It, it's a tough one because, you know, you look at a 35-point loss and – you know, we've been we've had a lot of those here lately, but you know, I I saw some good things. I, I I saw a lot of good things, a lot of things to be optimistic about. Yeah, could they have done some things better? Sure, take care of the football, um, get a couple more stops. You know, don't you know hold them to maybe get them you know go for about six of uh, six of fifteen instead of eight of thirteen on third down. But uh, overall, the the biggest takeaway I tell people from a game like this is um, Nebraska finally looked like it, uh, it belonged against an elite talent in the Big Ten. There's so many games I can think back to with Ohio State, with, um, you know, the first year of Frost in Michigan. We did, we did not look like we belonged in that same football field as Michigan. Um, I can't say that about this game. They looked like, uh, you know, other than maybe some skill positions at the wide receiver, that um, they were better than us. But overall, Nebraska, you know, had, had the, I think they're starting to get the guys to look like they're starting to belong in the upper echelon of the Big Ten. Jay Moore is with us. Jay, specifically your uh, area of expertise, the trenches. And uh, I thought Steely had a a money game. I thought Honus at linebacker was really good. He was just awesome. And he he looked like a different player, how fast he was playing. And then Robinson and Rogers, the R&R boys. I really like Nebraska on the, on the, the interior. Did that surprise you or are you kind of like, well, it's about damn time. I mean, time. how did you, what did you walk away yeah, with, look, with, with that interior group? Yeah. Um, the D line, why, you know, they played really good against the run. I know, I think Ohio state was around maybe four yards to carry, uh, four and a half, maybe, um, you know, and there just wasn't any, you know, in games like this and against, you know, elite talent in, in years past, you know, it was a lot of times big gashing, you know, holes and, you know, it's, Six yards here, seven yards here. There's a 12-yarder and just kind of rinse and repeat. They played physical. They played physical up front against um, a really, really good offensive line, arguably one of the best offenses, probably the best offense they'll face um, all year. Now, it's just too bad. You know, where, where I'd like to see them get more active is is getting a better rush on the quarterback. Now, Justin Field is a very good dual-threat quarterback. We we had our opportunity. Should have got him down a, a few more times, but – um, there's a reason why he's gonna, he's potentially a Heisman Trophy winner, um, and he was able, he was kind of greasy back there. But you know what? Overall, uh, pleasantly pleasantly surprised because you know 
there's there's not a, there was a the guys that played other than Stilly, they'd hardly played um, any football. Um, so that's that's a very good sign um, going against going ahead and into a game against Wisconsin where you know what they're going to do, and you know what they like to do. So uh, overall, very encouraged by how how the front, you know, four or five guys played uh, against against a very physical offensive line in, in Ohio State. Yeah, Jay, it, it felt like everything that Justin Fields touched on Saturday turned to gold, though. He was uh, almost unstoppable. Do you think that that is more containable with a better pass rush, or do you think it's more on the back end with the secondary? Well, I think the secondary, you have to pick your poisons. That's, you pick your battles in defense. There's no, there's no perfect defense you can call. Um, you have to kind of just pick your battles. And I think, obviously, Nebraska's defensive game plan was let's – keep them in front of us, <clears throat> let's allow them to complete some balls underneath or rally and tackle. Then once they get to the red zone, the field shrinks. Let's see if we can match up a little better there and eliminate some of that speed and hold them to three points and then let our offense go do work. Um, but they, were, they weren't able to, to capitalize on that. They, you know, they struggled on third down. Um, and Ohio State was able to complete some balls over top of our heads, you know, one for a touchdown and, um, and it was just, it's, it's hard, man. It's, it's, it's tough when you're going against such a potent offense like that and it's your first game. You know, it's, it's nice to get, it's nice to get a little warm up or, you know, against whether it's a South, a South Dakota State, no offense to those guys, but I mean, just someone, you know, where you can make some mistakes and not get absolutely, you not, not getting taken for six points. You know, you, you mess up, you give, you mess up um, just a little bit, Ohio State's going to burn you. But uh, the, defensively, they had to do what they had to do. Um, and try to keep them in front of them. Don't limit the big plays. Give your give your offense an opportunity to try to compete. I mean, this for Nebraska, this game needed to be about you know 35, 38, 42, 45 type of ball game for Nebraska to have a chance. And you know, just the offense didn't take care of their their chance they got at defense defensively. Yeah, they could have played cleaner, but that's that's what you got to do against Ohio State offense like this. And and in your first game, you don't know what you really got until the your live bullets. So. Um, you know, I, overall, not, I mean, they could have done some things um, better, but I know people are frustrated with the defensive game plan. But listen, I mean, you had to you had to pick your your battles and pick where you're going to try to you know win on Saturday. And I mean, they got elite talent at the wide receiver group uh, at Ohio State, and we just you know we had to again, like I said, I repeat myself here, but we had, we definitely had to choose our battles and, and where to attack, and um, we just didn't do it well enough. I thought Nebraska's secondary extremely physical, too physical in the realm of targeting. Jay, what do you do moving forward if you're Nebraska? You don't want those guys to, to not be aggressive. But, man, you want to talk about Murphy's Law and that targeting. Cam's was a, was a stupid play. There wasn't, let's, let's decapitate somebody. He was frustrated, doesn't excuse it. Deontay was going Ronnie Lott, and it was completely legal. They got screwed for it. What do you do if you're Nebraska moving forward? Yeah, you can't tell them to slow down. You cannot slow down. Uh, it's just kind of the way the football's going right now. You, but as a coach, you cannot tell them, you know, to hesitate or slow down because that's you do not want that. Where I think, you know, looking back at it, where really what they can do to, to try to limit this is come in as fast as, and violent as you want. But bring your arms, wrap up, you know, because that, that's going to, when you wrap up, you're going to move your head off to the side and you're going to get more shoulder into him. You're probably going to go um, a little lower because you're not trying to wrap up his head, you're trying to wrap up his torso. Um, I love the physicality, I love the aggression, I love playing fast and, and try to, and, and, and bringing it. But, I, you know, in t- today's day and age now, um, you just somehow got to wrap up. And I think you can come in and violent and as physical as you want, but as you try to wrap up, um, you can still bring some power now and some heat behind that hit, but I think if they can just wrap up, I think that's going to take, you know, the the negative look out of the play. And that negative look is, you know, it's just when you bring your shoulder and you you kind of bring your forearm there, and it's in a, in a bang bang in an instant. Even when you slow it down, it's just the intent is is something I think they. I don't know if it, it is it, you're able to dissect it enough or. You know, it's how, you know, was it malicious? Uh, but I think when you bring your arms, you try to wrap up. I think that, in, that intent and that malicious um, effort is kind of taken out of it. And they're trying to be, you know, a little more careful, a little more safer. Um, 
in this situation, but you in this but you can't you can't tell them to slow down. I mean, yeah, all all the calls. I mean, Nebraska did not get the benefit of the doubt in any of the calls all game. Um, it's too bad you're going to have you know your two guys in your secondary about the first half of the Wisconsin game, but you know that's just the way football goes and it's inconsistent. They got to they got to try to fix it, but I think overall, if you try to wrap up. And as best as you can, I think that's going to eliminate a lot of the issues. Jay Moore is with us, Blackshirt Husker NFL or co-host Big Red Wrap Up, his podcast, More To It. He uh, breaks down the Nebraska-Ohio State game with Corey McEwen here in the latest episode. Jay, Saturday means what? Is this is this a kind of a get-it-done moment for Nebraska as well as they played in, in spots against Ohio State? You never want to take Wisconsin for granted, specifically with their streak against Nebraska. But the quarterback thing's up in the air. They got to reload. They do that well. How big is Saturday from a from a momentum standpoint for Nebraska? Yeah, every every Saturday's huge, especially when you're only getting nine opportunities. Um, and then we'll see how it shakes out with the bowl season. But uh, yeah, it's a big one. I tell you, I watched a little bit of that Wisconsin game. You know, Illinois. Obviously not very impressed with them. They didn't um, care. <laughs> you, right, right. But, uh, you know, Wisconsin, you know what they are. You know what you're going to get. You're going to get um, a lot of da- a downhill running attack, and then they're going to try to run. They're going to run try to, uh, a ton of play action off of those same looks and just trying to get you to bite up a little bit. And they're going to they're gonna try to, you know, they're not going to take the top off the defense for the most part. They're just going to get their six, seven, eight yards here and there. They're going to, you know, move down the football field. Um, I like the way – we played physically uh, on Saturday. I think that matches up very well. So it's I like Nebraska. And it's, no matter even if uh, Wisconsin's you know quarterback, yeah, if he if he has positive as a if he plays or not, I still like Nebraska. I do. I just think we match up very very well in this. You know, it's just in in years past we just got out physical, and I, you know. We get them early in the year. You know, a lot of times you get Wisconsin later in the year where you're kind of dinged up, banged up. Um, but you know, I, I I think this is this is finally our time to to get one. Um, you know, we're looking at this game before. You know, it, it was more of a maybe 60-40 Wisconsin. You know, now it's you know I kind of like you know, Nebraska's chances where it's maybe you know fifty fifty, and especially if you know the quarterback doesn't play, then you know. Boy, I like Nebraska's chances even more, even though they're given nine points so far um, as of as of today. So, I, I I think I expect Nebraska to play very very well, just because you make you make a lot of improvements from game one to game two. Um, obviously, Wisconsin will, will as well. But listen, you just you just face one of the toughest opponents you're going to face all year. Not saying Wisconsin's not very good, but I mean it's it's, it's this is a different. They're a different animal than Ohio State, so I think defensively I like it. I like it, like the way we were given multiple looks offensively, doing some different wrinkles. Now we got to try to get some wide receivers more into action. But you know, you're not playing against as good a secondary as, as Ohio State says. You know, Jim Leonard's a hell of a defensive coordinator at Wisconsin. He's going to do some some good things. But uh, I, I feel I feel really good. I feel better going into this Wisconsin game than I have um, going into it. You know, I last three four years to be honest. Jay, about 20 seconds left, but I'm right with you. I think it should be a close game on Saturday. But after watching that game against Ohio State on Saturday, what is your biggest area of concern uh, going into this matchup? You know, right now, I, I got to say it's the wide receiver position. You know, I I don't know Omar Manning's deal. You know, Wandell's got to get some more touches, but you, people obviously know what Wandell can do. Um, but no, no offense to Cade Warner or, you know, some of the other guys, but – you got to have someone that can stretch the field and kind of take a top off the defense to kind of spread it out. Otherwise, they're just kind of, you know, there's nothing against Chuck, you know, taking, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten yards um, underneath to a tight end, which I love the involvement of the tight end. But uh, the wide receiver has got to, uh, the room's got to develop into something to where it can be some sort of a threat and a more consistent option. Because, and granted, I know we're playing, this is, I got to, you know, we played the best, one of the best teams in the nation, so they're able to take away a few weapons that you have. But that, that, you got to have someone that you can kind of rely on going forward in the season for this offense to really thrive. Jay Moore, Bird, we'll talk soon. Thanks for the time. Yeah, you got it, Smitty. Chime in, 402-466-ESPN, or email the show, chris at hailvarsity.com. Just try me. Try me. Back to Hail Varsity Radio. 
Good stuff from Jay Moore. That'll be on the ESPN uh, Lincoln.com on demand section. Elijah will get it up on Twitter as well, ESPN Lincoln. Podcast for Hale Varsity. Find us uh, in iTunes. That's a subscription for you that is free. Spotify. And, of course, Google Play and Heard Ad Media. Uh, that is your go-to for all the podcasts you need. And one 466 3776 466 800 Are you more confident after Saturday with Nebraska going into Wisconsin? Uh, do you expect uh, big things on Saturday against the Badgers? Even an under potentially undermanned Badger team. But uh, there was a lot of good, not the, the main good, which is the, the scoreboard. Uh, that takeaway is, is there. And that's kind of echoed today, Elijah, by several of, of Nebraska's players. Uh, they, are, <laughs> they are not in the moral victory game. Uh, let's hear from DiCaprio Boodle. He kind of kicked things off uh, when it comes to, to lessons from Ohio State. Uh, this will be our theme here. It's one thing to feel positive and good about certain areas of Saturday. The end result is the end result, and the uh, the 2020 Nebraska football team is in no way, shape, or form in the business of, of moral victories. Here's where I think it can be big. It's been a long time, probably two years, since you've played a team of that caliber and played and, and been in it. Okay. So, Elijah, you played high level football. You know that you can take parts of a performance, build on that, and have confidence. And I think it's been a long time coming since Nebraska's probably had a high level of confidence. You can be jacked up and be emotion driven and, and f- hope to win. But I think Nebraska went in. Saturday against that big dog feeling like if we do our thing we can be in it we can we can go in the football game didn't happen they didn't execute at a high enough level but I think they feel pretty good going in and I think they're I think they're ready to take out x number of years of frustration on somebody at some point this season I don't know if that's Saturday because of how just money Wisconsin is, how disciplined Wisconsin is, how built uh, Wisconsin is. But I I think uh, the old can of whoop-ass will be opened on somebody this year by Nebraska, and uh, they'll enjoy uh, handing out a beating versus receiving a beating. That is, maybe that's too Pollyanna if you're – a Nebraska fan got to see some proof, but there was some there were some moments Saturday that I think will travel, that will apply to a Wisconsin game that'll feel better about. All right, how how do you match up going against an Iowa or a Minnesota? I mean, Minnesota was okay offensively, but Michigan looked man, they looked poised, they looked ready. Um. I thought the Indiana Penn State game, you want to talk about the wrong time to go on a beer run? <laughs> was was that Indiana Penn State game? I whiffed on that thing. Yeah, me too. I was like, oh, it's 28 20. This thing's done. I'm in at 44. Oh, bleep. Uh, Indiana won, and they, they got a break with the two point conversion. Let's go to the phones real quick and open phones till five uh, here this first hour. And then uh, last 20 minutes of the show, too, you want to jump in, please do it. 466-377-6800-825-5865. What camp are you in? Uh, Better but not good enough. Was it a step forward Saturday? Or talk to me when Nebraska beats somebody of substance. Still too many mistakes. I mean, there's three doors you can choose from. John, thanks for calling. Go ahead. You know, I am in I am in the camp where I really believe I what my eyes told me on Saturday is we're dang close. I saw our offensive line and our defensive line hold 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 their own, hold their own. And uh, aside from one possession prior to the second half and giving them the ball back, 
and them putting a quick one on us. Look, they exposed a couple problems. Uh, we need a wide receiver that can stretch the field. Mm-hmm. We didn't have they. We didn't have that like they did, and we need a pass rusher. But other than that, we are close, and I think we're going to go on a run, and it's going to happen quick. That's how I feel. I thought they played very well, and the score was not not at all indicative of the game. And I thought the officiating was horrible. And are you chalking? Me a, are you chalking that up? That? Uh, no, you you can you can be ticked off, John. Absolutely about the officiating, and it, you didn't need it. You didn't need those two. BS calls, and I'm not even talking. I mean, the targeting call was god awful, but I'm talking the the uncatchable. Let's throw a flag at Cam Taylor Britt, and then oh, Markel just mukes getting <laughs> getting get, about, getting piggybacked. How about, the, how about some of the other ones, like not measuring a ball when that's only when they only made it by two inches until we threw a fit about it. You shouldn't have to or, ask for that. Yeah, I, I'm telling you what they. That was a poorly officiated game, and it was very one-sided. I'm telling you, we're getting close to going on a run, and I can't wait. John, thanks for calling. Appreciate it. See, there's a there's a fired-up Husker fan. That's all right. And you kind of get that feeling, but some of you, and I get it, are are very hesitant to put all the chips in. With all right, there is that feeling. It's. Is it about to pop, Elijah? I mean, after are, are, they, are they about? And that's so, like you know, I've, I, I'll take a breathalyzer now. I've not been getting saucy all day. I, I'm honest. I mean, there's a part of me that says, "All right, John's not wrong. This team could be about to pop." Like in the, the, the like the one team that I remember watching over the years with college football, and this team went to a Rose Bowl. They were really good. It's probably the last really good UCLA team. But you had UCLA in 1998. Okay, they they drilled Miami at the end of the season. They started off 0 and 2. This UCLA team, they were loaded with talent. They they got nipped in some big get, you know, the two early games. And then they go drop a nuke on Texas like 66 to 3 just just they they brought the tire iron with them. And like, oh, damn, UCLA is about to pop. This team can come together. This team can get really good. This team can get confident. They just got to gotta finish a big game. They can hang around. There's been moments where they've been close, and then it's unraveled. But let's uh, – do we have time to sneak in Russ? Let's sneak in Russ. Russ got about 45 seconds. It's all you. Go ahead. Thanks. Hey, thanks for taking my call. Um, just want to say that I think this Saturday is the game of the season. I know everyone wants to talk about Iowa, but this will set the tone. And uh, it's time to step up, and we look like we're ready to take that step, and, and we need to get it done Saturday. Don't disagree with you. Whether they limp in or not, still Wisconsin, they're still trained and trained at an expert level, and you got to go do it. Russ, thanks for calling. More of your calls. Uncle Charlie's coming up. Mr. Blackshirt, Charlie McBride will wind down Hour 1. Tale Varsity presented by the Nebraska Lottery. And now. And now, back to Hale Varsity Radio. I'm kind of planning to get the meat sweats on Friday. Not going to lie. We are on the road at Piedmontese. Roadshow Friday. Jay Moore going to be riding shotgun. We are at the Mercado your friends at Piedmontese. That's just across uh, the way on 84th, North 84th, uh, from the Lancaster Event Center. So Piedmontese, legendary company. They are amazing with uh, their meat. The Mercado is uh, where you need to check out, man. It's a retail location. You can get yourself a beer, uh, get it picked up, get your get your, uh, your, your your beef, your, 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 your smoked goodness. You can get your boss the eight steaks you owe him. Right. We're, we're, that's where we're going. Here. I was just going to jump in there. <laughs> but no, come see us at the Mercado Piedmontese. Their retail location is un, just unparalleled. It's so good. Get yourself that specialty cut you want. Throw it on the grill. Going to be nice on uh, Saturday. Good weather. Thank God this garbage ice is going to be out of town. And 
just fire up the smoker or uh, how about some some short ribs i'm a short ribs guy they can handle that for you your pork chop guy done uh if you like uh, that that t-bone bang they've got it for you so come see us four to six on friday hail varsity road show with piedmontese at the mercado me and jay moore speaking of of, of meat brother uh i said that seattle was due to lose there were some wild games this weekend between the World Series Saturday night, between the Indiana Penn State finish, and then you, you had Seattle get conservative. And uh, not only did Arizona come back, but they won an over. My kid and my wife were like throwing stuff at the TV. They were so ticked off last night. <laughs> and I was like, all right, so maybe this streak is broken. And then lo and behold, Arizona did me a solid, and not only did I win, but I didn't need the three uh, to do what three and a half. Seattle was favored, so the long and, sh- and short story here is, uh, is Elijah Herbal now has lost three consecutive steak and beer bets to me this season. Yes, yeah. See, when it went to overtime, I thought I am so glad I got that three and a half instead of three from Chris because I thought I thought I I whittled it down to three, but that's okay. Whatever. We're, 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 we, we, we can check the tape from Friday. And then DK decides to go from 50 yards out on his screen, and I thought, yes! And then a penalty calls it back, and I knew it was over from there. I knew I knew I, had, I stood no chance. Well, I mean, just an insane game. Game of the year. Oh, it is. And you're going to see that with with Arizona and Kyler Murray. So much fun. And and he's kind of your, your next Russell Wilson-type style of quarterback where – Defense is <laughs> is optional. Everyone's throwing for yards. There's big plays. It's exciting. It's entertaining. And if you're a poor defensive lineman, good luck and God bless chasing those little guys around. But man, three and zero. We'll see where we go this Friday with our stake in a beer bet. We'll have to pick a ball game. I want to stay away from my Broncos, but Broncos Chargers is looking like an interesting one early. It, it might be. That, uh, that could be a pick'em game. I want to remind you about your friends at West Blue Realty. Go see the folks at West Blue. They specialize in residential home sales in Lincoln and surrounding communities. Are you moving in 2020? You mentioned Hale Varsity for a limited time to West Blue Realty. They can provide you up to $1,000 on the closing of your next home purchase. Tom Luby. Tom can help you out at 402-540-3768. With West Blue Realty, Kelly Hofschneider. Kelly's incredible. And, and I think he's got a Wisconsin voodoo doll, so that might be apropos. 402-202-2312. WestBlueRealty.com, 1120 K Street, Suite 200. Charlie McBride's next. Welcome to Hail Varsity Radio, the voice of Husker Nation. Insight, opinion, expertise, with the biggest and best names talking Nebraska across the state. Join the show on Twitter at Hail Varsity and at Schmitz underscore radio. Call in at 402-466-ESPN or 1-800-825-5865. Here's Chris Schmitz. Thanks for spending time. Great to be with you. It's Hour 2. It's Hale Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbel, as uh, we are recapping Ohio State, Nebraska, looking forward to Wisconsin. It is that time on a Monday where we bring in Mr. Blackshirt, Charlie McBride, and Elijah just hung up on Mr. Blackshirt. Who? The call dropped, I swear. <laughs> you better pray. Next time he's in Lincoln, he's going to be looking for you. Numbers to get in, 466 800-825-5865. So that was unintentional. That's the story Elijah's going to stick with uh, when it comes to, to hanging up on a legend and Hall of Famer. We welcome in Charlie McBride, Mondays with Charlie. Coach, how are we doing? Good. <laughs> I just uh, sitting here just thinking about quitting football out in my life. You know what I mean? I see so much stuff that you just want to choke somebody. Well, you know, that's want... that's where we can start off, Coach. How did how did you take Saturday, and specifically with uh, some of the calls that did not go Nebraska's way? Well, that's that was that was my my problem. I you know, and I I grew up with a couple of guys in um, uh, at home in Chicago, and um, 
uh, Frank Strohschu, who was a Big Ten official and, and could have gone to the NFL, but he had leg problems, and Jerry Markbright, who ended up being the head of officials in the NFL. Oh, wow. And these guys are, these guys are you know, I mean, they're really, um, they were really, uh, I remember how hard they worked and how hard they studied stuff and things. And when I, it, I have, you know, you, I write down stuff, uh, you know, at the end of a game. And the first thing I wrote down is um, not a good officiating crew. It, it looked like um, OSU's offensive line. I know they were holding like crazy, and the guy just put his flag in his pocket, and he ain't going to call anything. And uh, that's what some guys do, and Frank told me that for a fact. He said, we got guys, they said, oh, we had a guy on our, sta- our team, our, uh, squ- our uh, team that was officiating one year, and he's he didn't he didn't call one holding call. He didn't call one. I mean, and so he got fired. Mm-hmm. But but the thing is, is some of these people, you know, are there, you know, they're 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 there because, you know, they probably haven't had enough work before they get there. Gotcha. You know, a lot of them. A lot of them go through high school and. I mean, I know, I know all the guys I know went through the Big Ten or went through college football. They went to start out in high school, college. And they worked their tails off and finally got a chance in the NFL. And uh, you know, and and so it goes, it goes that way. And then sometimes, you know, you want to get a bunch of people up there quick, and so you grab stuff, and it just doesn't make sense. And 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 the, the head penalty thing was. Was, it was sad. I mean, it really the targeting. was. targeting. Yeah. How? What do you tell your kids? What do you tell your kids as a defensive coach and coordinator? What are you saying <laughs> to your kids if you're Coach Chinander? I don't, I don't know what you tell them. You know, I mean, it. you know, when you see them trying to get away and do the right thing, and then they get called besides that, what are they supposed to do? Crawl in a shell? Yeah. And even the guys on TV weren't real happy about it. I mean, they, they had... At least two of the calls they felt like shouldn't have been called. One maybe, and but the other two were no way. And um, you know, I kind of looked at it, you know, the same thing. I just the one thing the one guy did say that maybe what they ought to do is get to one of those that's a you know a shoulder type of deal that is to maybe give them the fifteen yard penalty, but don't kick them out of the game. Right. You know, I mean, you're taking a kid out of the game, you know, is kind of a, you know, not. I don't think it's fair. That, that's all I'm saying. I, I mean, you can take them out for a series or something or give them a penalty, whatever you want to do, but just to penalize them and then say you can't play for a half the next week? Yeah. You know, get a life. Charlie McBride's with us Mondays with Charlie. Coach, you're very clear. And I don't think there's there's Nebraska fans that that don't like the Big Ten. They don't like how this year's gone in the Big Ten. There's some Nebraska fans out there that believe to their core the league's got it out for Nebraska. I'm not going that far, but I think it's Mm -hmm. fair to say that not just in the Nebraska game, but look at the Indiana-Penn State game, too. I mean, there were a couple of bad days for a couple of Big Ten refing crews. Oh, yeah, I know. I mean, it's you know, I you know, the, when you get a new commissioner, number one is, you know, most of these guys have been a commissioner or been an assistant commissioner somewhere else before they started here, mm-hmm. and I think that's that's really important. I know we have a couple guys. Eddie Stewart is one of them. Sure, down in Missouri. Yeah, and he's been an assistant commissioner, and and you know, and, and I just think that that that's the way you have to go. You have to learn the ranks, and you have to learn how to communicate with that with ads and so on and so forth. And I don't think the decision in the beginning was made with anybody except him. And I, you know, I mean, he he's probably still listening to his NFL buddies. Yeah. And um, and then when you hear a. a, a uh, announcer on the uh, television uh, who's from another school in the first place and criticizing the big players, the, the teams in the Big Ten, and and saying Nebraska, if they don't like it, they ought to get out. You know, sure. That kind of stuff, that kind of stuff can get a guy's nose bent. <laughs> and 
you know, that kind of stuff, I, I know that, you know, how I felt about it. I mean, if I was there, it wouldn't have been a good scene. Uh, and um, that kind of stuff is no good. And, and yet he's still there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think he stinks, but... He's, you know, they, they, they go through a whole bunch of guys now, and they got guys from different schools and different stuff like that, and which I think is fine. But, uh, you know, to, to, you have to be neutral. I mean, you just have to be, whether you like it or not. Coach, what and again? To that, yeah, to say that one of the teams that, of the league you played in, just because, of, just because Nebraska came in late, didn't come in in 1492 when Columbus was over there, you know, and um, you know to say stuff like that uh, on 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 national television, and uh, you know read read Scott out, and mm-hmm. of course he didn't read the Ohio State guy out; he yeah. just read Scott out. You know, and you know that that's what made it sickening. Coach, and to me that that guy shouldn't be around. Want to get your thoughts? What did you? walk away with from Saturday and I got to get some thoughts on Wisconsin as well and your old buddy Paul Chris but I I thought what did you take away what did you like Saturday specifically on the lines of scrimmage did Nebraska look different Uh this year at least different this game than in past opportunities against big name teams I the best thing I saw is I really felt comfortable. I really felt good about the young players up front on the defense. I really felt good about them. I mean, they're, 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 there's some good players there. And uh, I think their their defensive line's got some good things, and I think that guy's doing a good job with them from what I can see. You know, it's yeah. hard to see everything on television. Sure. You don't see nothing. But And I thought the offensive, I think the move, um, you know, they made that move from tackle to guard, and a lot of times, from, you know, they move people around, but uh, you know, getting the right tackle moved in and so on and so forth. It, it, I think it made a lot of sense, and it, and it, I think it made number one. It made the offensive line a lot better. And you know, I couldn't tell about you know the younger offensive linemen as much as I could the defensive guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were on the field, you know, for a while. But, uh, that, you know, that's one of the things. I, you know, anytime, though, anytime that there's 50-some points scored on you, something's bad. Sure. <laughs> you can say anything you want about trying to make up the stories, but it, it's bad. And, and there's, there's, you know, there's some things that they got to really decide what they're going to do. You can't do too much. And I think on offense and just what I saw there, when you have all these different groupings and your best players aren't in them, then I think you're going to cause some problems with the, with the players wondering why they're not on the field more. And they get all this pub before the season and maybe get to run, maybe get their hands on the ball six, eight times. Mm-hmm. And, oh, that's not good. And I think that we got to find a way to get our best players on the field I mean, if you make some guys unhappy, that's just too bad. You can't be working with 15, 5, 10, 15 guys at one position and keep them all satisfied. You can't do it. And so uh, that, that, that could, you know, if you get the guys there, that you get your top 33 guys going, or 30, not quite 33, mm-hmm. but 22 and half of the third team, you know, some guys are pretty good. You know, you need an extra running back and all that kind of stuff in teamwork. And they got enough guys to have four stations like we had where you'll get a ton of reps. I mean, a ton of them. But a lot of times coaches don't want their – they want to be with their players all the time. And, you know, I didn't – you know, I I just feel like that, you know, you you have an offense, two offensive stations, two defensive stations – and it, it one you got one and two defense working at one end of the field, one and two offense working at the other end of the field, and then they switch. They go from the passing game to the inside run game to the goal line. You know that kind of stuff. They go, but it's it's a it's a everybody's working, mm-hmm. and they're getting a lot of reps. I mean, a lot of them. 
And sometimes I never was with the defensive lineman on one of the drills. Tony Samuel was down there, and I knew Tony was a good enough coach where if a guy's making a huge mistake, if not, I'm going to see it on film. Sure. That's where I coach the kids anyway. You know, so – uh, and keep the keep the scout team guys going good. I mean, they can't stand around. They gotta they gotta, you know, give them some resistance. You know, I think sometimes you need. You know, you can't be a sweetheart. If you're gonna coach like a, you know, some guys are that way, but if everybody's that way, and and you're not disciplining the kids in the right manner. I mean, if you're just saying, you know. Honey, this is not right. You need to do this. And I, you know, grab him and tell him what he's doing wrong. Let him have it. You know, and and things like that. If it continues, and and I'm, and I think, you know, there's been sometimes I just wonder if anybody even yells at anybody. <laughs> you you know, I mean, Tom never Tom Tom would yell at a guy. I'll tell you that. You know, every once in a while. I know Scott does. I mean, I mm-hmm. I assume he does. But I just, I just worry about, you know, things happening. If you have a running play up there, okay, here's the way I looked at it. You, you call a play, and you get up there and you put your defense up there. Now, you call the play because that play, you, and t- down in distance, that's what, that's what you want. I mean, to run. You're an offensive guy. Okay? Now, when you change that play because the offense is different, you're doing something you didn't really want to do. You're doing something else. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> what, what our guys did a lot of is they may call the play and they may move the defense where they get nobody on the sideline is going to stop the play. The offensive line, they're going to change the blocking, and bang, it goes. And, and, and so a lot of times, you know, I don't know the reason. I, I see te- all the teams are doing it. Their quarterback stands there. They're wasting time. They're going back, and everybody wants to. We we run our offense fast. How can you run your offense fast? I know exactly what we did. We Tom wanted every play run within 13 seconds. <laughs> so so it was like you know, and that's how you get a lot of you get a lot of reps. You get the, the reps in, Coach. Yeah. I got to jump in and ask you about Paul Chris. You go back a long ways with Coach Chris. There, uh, some uncertainty with their quarter their quarterback situation. What do you think of this Wisconsin team, and how big is Saturday for Nebraska's season? Well, I think that I think they're a, you know a, a young team. You know, especially up front, they got a lot of guys. They had eleven or so drafted. You know, and that that taken off your team. That's that's pretty that's a pretty good group. Mm-hmm. That I think their offensive line is going to be pretty good as the year goes on. Right now, I think they're a little bit, you know, shaky, mm-hmm. and their defense, I think, up front too is a little bit shaky. But you know, their secondary looks good. They're solid. In other words, they they are a solid team. They know what they're doing. There there isn't a their coaches aren't rocket scientists and try to put in five million things. They they put in stuff and they rep it and rep it and rep it. So they're better than you may know what they're doing, mm-hmm. but they're going to be better than you. You play the plays, and we're going to be better on defense than you are. You know, and so, but Paul um, was a lousy piano player anyway. But <laughs> when he was a kid, so do you feel good <laughs> he, about he, Saturday? Do you feel good about Saturday like, for Nebraska? Huh? Do you feel good about Saturday for Nebraska? Yeah, I feel good about them. They can beat. They can beat Wisconsin. I mean, I don't think there's any question. I I thought, you know, they could beat you. You, you got to do all the, pull the right things, and they have a lot of turnovers to beat Ohio State mm-hmm. right now. But the thing is, is you know, you look at them; they got a lot of young guys too. Mm-hmm. So you know, you just have to kind of evaluate it. You know, in a in a one game thing, I think it's too tough to do. I think you need to see how you play against. Now, this quarterback's going to be as good as they'll see. I mean, Mm -hmm. they saw a good quarterback last week. This guy may be better. Oh, wow. And, and, I mean, he's thrown one completion in the last – at the end of last year, he didn't have an incompleted pass. He threw nine of them during last year, and he didn't have one of them was incomplete. Mm -hmm. And he went through, what, 21 or 22 or – yeah, we'll you know, see if he time. gets to play with his COVID or not. But, Coach, we'll uh, we'll get you caught up next uh, Monday, and hopefully it's a win for Nebraska. Thanks for jumping on with us. 
We'll, we'll get after them. I'll promise you that. <laughs> I think this week those those older kids that are there are going to start cranking it up. Well, that'll be good. Coach, you take care. Thanks for okay. the time. Yep. And we're back. Fellas, I think we could listen to the radio listen. On Hale Varsity Radio, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Yes! That's awesome! Coach McBride was cranked up. You got to hear that. Knows Wisconsin well. Knows Paul Christ. Says Coach is an awful piano player. And feels really good about Saturday. I think there's a lot of Nebraska fans that feel good Saturday. No matter who's uh, behind center. I hope Mertz plays. I hope Nebraska gets a chance to play against Wisconsin when they're full strength. We'll see how this Saturday translates to next Saturday. We welcome in Greg Smith, HailVarsity.com and Magazine at Greg Smith HV. Greg's our recruiting insider. Also has an incredible podcast with Jay Foreman. You can get that on the uh, Hail Varsity platform with Herdat Media. We say hi to Mr. Greg. Greg, what'd you think Saturday? Uh, are you in the camp of all right, better than past performances, and there's some some light at the end of the tunnel? Or talk to me when it's not a you know a thirty point plus spread and a loss on national TV. Where are you at with things from Saturday? Oh, I, I think okay. So first of all, you, you do want to start to close the score gap there, yeah. um, but I but you do come across. I, I I couldn't help but come out of that game feeling more encouraged than discouraged, um, just because I think the a couple of key areas that I was looking for in that game was one, could Nebraska match Ohio State's physicality uh, just in general and especially in the trenches, and would Nebraska come out like kind of come out hot, come out like with a fast start, um, and they were able to do both of those. Obviously, it didn't get maintained, um, both either offense or defense. Um, it's well covered that they you know, shot themselves in the foot numerous times. Some of those same things that plagued them in previous uh, years and also plagued them again on Saturday. Um, but I was really encouraged by the, the couple of things that I thought were are portable throughout the rest of the season. They're definitely going to have to match other big teams in starting, of course, with Wisconsin this week um, from a physicality standpoint on the lines of scrimmage. Talking with Greg Smith here on Hale Varsity Radio. And Greg, on the flip side of that, what areas of the game on Saturday concerned you uh, as it, as we look at the uh, the season moving forward for the Huskers? Oh, I think still, well, two big things. One, you still gave up too many big plays on defense, especially if you're not going to take the ball away uh, more than they did. They did get the one takeaway, but, but you've got to be, do a better job of that. Um, if you're going to be kind of feast or famine, that needs to be a little bit more feast. Um, and then I think, like, the, it's really weird. The offense was varied, and it was very creative. And I thought this Scott Cross called a good overall game. But on the other hand, it's concerning with the complete lack of downfield attempts. Like, I understand that Ohio State is really good, and they have, you know, what Sean Wade is going to probably be a first-round pick on other guys that will end up being NFL draft picks. Um, but you've got to find a way to stress the defense down the field, because even in, which makes it even more exciting for Nebraska fans if they ended up rushing the ball for six yards to carry when it basically the offense was a lot of razzle down to end up running the ball, uh, but they're going to have to find a way to get the ball down the field. Recap in Nebraska, Ohio State, get his take on Wisconsin as well. Greg Smith with us, HailVarsity.com and Magazine at Greg Smith HV. So, Greg, uh, back to kind of the offensive game plan. I like people are, are bitching a little bit here about, you know, Mills and his involvement. And, and I know Mills got into the end zone, but there was some side to side with him. That was a little bit of a different role with with how they ran him. But I'll say this, Nebraska was super functional and effective with the quarterback run. That's where they kind of leaned when, when maybe Ohio State, State thought it was going to be a heavy dose of mills. And it was the quarterback run game in the first half that really did well. And even based on the two fumbles, you had two nice drives going. Uh, in that second half that one was a scoop and score and the other one obviously it was 45 17 at the time but you were you were driving I mean you were in Ohio State territory did you like that uh, I don't want to call it uh, switch up but 
hey, uh, you have that, that, that dynamic back there with a quarterback and running back run game. I like the fact that the quarterbacks were, were willing to run and given the green light to do so. And I thought that, that threw off Ohio State. I mean, you saw it happen the other side of the ball with Fields and his scrambles. Yeah, I thought that that worked well, and I, I thought that that was a good switch up from what you normally or what was expected of them with, with Dietrich Mills, especially with, you know, Ryan Hell calling the bell cow and, and Mills definitely embracing that. The thing coming off of that that I'm wondering is if you go and look at Dietrich Mills' carries, like he's not carrying the ball 25-plus times in games a lot last year. I think he is high last year. I think it was 24 against Iowa. I think he's, he carried it 17 times against um, Wisconsin last year. He had a, a big-time yards per carry uh, average in that game. I'm really that was his breakout game against a really stout defense. Um, but I'm wondering if, you know, by bell cow, they don't just mean that he's their main guy, but they're definitely going to sprinkle other guys in, including the running, the quarterbacks running the football. Because we also got to see Ronald Tompkins out there as well, uh, who looked good in his debut. And so he's going to need a couple more carries as well. Um, so I'm curious to see how that looks going forward. But I thought I think they're going to need to use all of the weapons at their disposal. Um, and no one should really care one way or the other as long as they move the football. Greg, what do you think is keeping some of the high flyers off the field when it comes to the wide receivers? There are personnel and bodies and talent in that receiver's room. Is it the no block, no rock side of things, or is it just comfort, trust, and understanding because you didn't see, I mean, you didn't see Alante uh, till, till late. Uh, Wandale had six catches. Uh, Nebraska fans want to see that six catches per quarter. <laughs> okay. And, right. and you have some really big time dynamic athletes. Do you think, do you think you'll, you'll see them uh, more so against Wisconsin versus throwing them in against at Ohio State, where Nebraska could do a controlled passing attack and lean on the run. They just they just stub their toe too many times with penalties and turnovers. Do you think it'll? Do you think the the, the door will be unlocked for the wide receiver room here moving forward? I think the door will start to be cracked. Um, I just have a, I'm a little skeptical on them just completely busting the door wide open. I'll say that. Um, but I do think that you end up seeing those guys getting out there a little bit more. Um, and I think the reason for the kind of slow playing of the wide receivers in my mind is two, in two parts. One, I do think the no block, no rock thing is real. I think that, and I think that Frost wants to build a culture within that wide receiver group that we take pride in blocking on the perimeter and we, we take pride of being good teammates in that way, and that's just something that we're going to have to do to make our offense be successful, and then you'll get passes uh, coming your way. But I also think it's an attention to detail, showing up every day for practice and knowing what you're going out there to do and, and just kind of staying on those details for those guys, too. you got to remember, young guys coming into the program, you know, they probably are more likely to just think about wanting to go out there and just catch passes and make the highlight real play, not necessarily doing the dirty work. So you really want to set that tempo early in their careers as well. Greg Smith with us here on Hale Varsity Radio. And Greg, when you look at the offense, the number one thing that stood out to me from the weekend was the turnovers. Uh, we went into the weekend kind of knowing if Nebraska turns the ball over, they don't really have a shot against this Ohio State team. And they did turn the ball over. What is your level of concern with the turnovers moving forward in the season? Is it more of a, that was Ohio State, they're a great team? Or, or do you think this is something we need to watch as we, uh, as we move forward in the season? No, I definitely think that's something you got to watch um, just because it's been something that has plagued Nebraska um, under Scott Frost. And it's in part something that is naturally going to kind of occur, especially with the fumbles, when you ask the quarterbacks to run that much. I think Scott Frost said it perfectly today uh, when he said that if we're going to ask our quarterbacks to run like running backs, um, they need to protect the ball like running backs as well. And so it was great that both Luke and Adrian were very aggressive when they decided to run, and you like the decisive so much that they ran, um, but you got to make sure you're getting that ball security as well, um, especially on that AJ one because the guy did not actually hit the ball, he hit his arm, so you would like to hope that he could hang on to that one. The loop one, the guy didn't hit the ball, uh, so that's a little bit tougher, um, but you know, it's a concern going forward, and so they really clean that up and show it consistently. I think that's always going to be in the back of your mind. Greg, about two minutes here. Greg Smith's with us. Hey, of our city.com and magazine, uh, the, the 2019 and 2020 recruiting class 
you're seeing those kids uh, get developed. They're Big Ten strong. Uh, give me a thought on Rodgers and Robinson, their contributions, and also what's your gut tell you as we talk Monday about Saturday. I don't, I don't want to be that guy, but I kind of feel like it is kind of a must win, and that's not to, to, to pour any salt on this. I mean, Wisconsin's Wisconsin, but I think the time is, is ripe for a really nice jump forward. How are you feeling Saturday? Yeah, so I think that with the with the 2019 2020 recruiting class and those guys showing up a little bit here, a lot of it with that 19 class, I think that's the single biggest like point of you know recruiting selling point that came out of the weekend for Nebraska. I think if Nebraska can go on the recruiting trail and say, hey, listen, we get we're getting these guys ready to play and we're getting them ready to play early in their career at a multitude of positions on the offensive line, the defensive line, in the secondary, at running back, um, linebacker. Like, here's what you can do in our program. I think that that's great. I thought that Casey Rogers looked good. Ty Robinson was as expected as was Bryce Benhart, who I think really um, shown in that game kind of doing a good job against Zach Harrison and Friday, who were both highly rated guys. Um, and then I think for this game this weekend, I think it's a must win as well, Chris. I'm with you on that one. And I think that this is a type of game, kind of like Penn State, Ohio State, a few years back for James Franklin and his crew. is a game that if you can win it, it can springboard you forward because it all of a sudden, the rest of those games on the schedule don't look quite as scary if you were able to take down the Badgers who you haven't been able to beat in years. Um, it, it's a huge game for Nebraska. They got to play better, obviously, than they did last weekend, but if they come out with the physicality, I think they can hang with the Badgers. Greg, while we're on the topic of the, the 2019 and 2020 recruits, I want to ask you about uh, the receivers, Alante Brown, Chris Hickman, uh, Marcus Fleming, about a minute left here. Uh, what's your take on their lack of involvement in that game on Saturday? Yeah, I think it, it's you, you. You gotta see. You gotta figure out a way to get those guys on the field. And while I said earlier that you know it's on them as well to be able to pay attention to details and really be professionals about what they're doing, um, especially on perimeter blocking and then knowing as much of the plays and playbook as they can. Um, at the on the flip side of that, Scott Frost and his staff has got to figure out a way to get those guys on the field. You see it all over the place in college football now that wide receiver is one of the easier positions out there to be able to get young players acclimated and on the field. Um, the speed of Marcus Fleming is something that can help take the top off of the defense. Alante Brown, we've been hearing good things about him since January. Um, we, we can't go too many weeks here without seeing those guys on the field because you're going to need more of those players to be able to be out there and help your football team. Greg Smith, him and uh, Jay Foreman, check the podcast out. Google Play, iTunes, Spotify, check that out. And uh, Greg will talk... Uh, again soon awesome stuff thanks for jumping on hey thanks as always man you guys have a great week all right we'll hear from scott frost next on hail varsity and now and now back to hail varsity radio thanks for hanging out great to be with you on a monday it's hail varsity radio presented by the nebraska lottery chris schmidt elijah herbal open phone still six to get you ready for wisconsin nebraska thoughts on ohio state still Putting that one to bed, and uh, I think you saw progress from the team, but it's this isn't moral victory land. If you're a Nebraska fan, you you're sick about getting half a hundred hung up on you. Coach McBride was right, but there's some some silver linings, mm, and, and, I, and I think that's okay to take with you. Yeah, we hear Scott Frost say all the time, it's never as good as you think, and it's never as bad as you think when you go back and watch the film, and I think that's probably true for this game. It wasn't as bad as it looked for the defense getting 52 put up on them, but it wasn't as good as the offense looked in the first half. I, when you look at their second half performance, I think there's a middle ground. There, there. there is middle ground, and I think what, what you, you walk away with Saturday that's frustrating is you're driving and both fumbles, you're in territory, that, that keeps you from kind of answering this onslaught where there is consecutive scores. After a once upon a time, it was 14 to 14 with four minutes left. You're in position to, to, to get a stop defensively. You hold them to a field goal and then delay a game, which just, God, that, that, you just got to like start throwing stuff if you're a Nebraska fan on that. Like, why? Why? How does that? How does that happen? And every time there was a penalty or a hold, it got derailed. Coach McBride is like he's been through everything and anything as a coordinator, as a guy that's took arrows from fans, as a guy who's beloved because of how great he is. 
and he's the last he's Chuck's the first guy to say shut up and play. He's genuinely pissed about what he saw officiating wise. I mean those those refs definitely had a game one performance and I Th- think they it's, did. And mm-hmm. and it's it's listen, it's not that the Cam Taylor Britt targeting thing wasn't a headbutt. It's not that Dismuke couldn't have softened up. Hell no, Dismuke. I shouldn't say Dismuke. Uh, uh, Deontay Williams. Deontay has nothing to apologize for. And Nebraska looked like the more physical team, the way they lit. How many times did Ohio State guys drop? Nebraska was lighting up their wide receivers. You need that. It's been forever since that's happened, where the last several years in the Big Ten, Nebraska's got guys laying on the field. They never used to have people laying on the field. Nebraska's always stomping people. Now you have a couple of heat seekers between Dismuke and Deontay and Cam Taylor Britt. And, and Boodle was super physical. I loved his game. Loved his game. I know he got beat a couple of times, but the, the play he made on the, <laughs> the incompletion – where he wrapped the dude up and then let him just fall down where it was incomplete. I mean, and, and the way Boodle came up on run support, I mean, man, he looks vicious, and I love that because he's, he's, he's your dude on that defense that's earned and grinded, and, and I look for him to have a, a big game against Wisconsin. A lot of these seniors, man, that have just gotten the crap kicked out of them by Wisconsin, by Iowa, They've had a, a close one against Ohio State. Ohio State's dropped nukes on them. I mean, just go go let it all out Saturday. Go play confident. And the lines of scrimmage were, were, a, were a welcome sight if you're a Nebraska fan on Saturday. So progress, yeah. There, there's half the camp that says absolutely Saturday was progress. There's the other camp that says it was it was okay, but let's not – Let's not break our arm patting ourselves on the back. You still gave up 52. The thing that's frustrating, though, Elijah, is is the turnovers and the miscues. And you wonder, can that finally get fixed where you're not hurting yourself? What Barney tell us last week? Coach Barnett's like, you want to give yourself a chance. And between some, some questionable officiating, which did not determine the game, but it didn't help. And it didn't help in a bad moment in the game where all right you go three and out after holding ohio state to a field goal and then ohio state drives down and bang it turns that thing into a into a 10 point halftime deficit when you're just when you're just tied and then they come out and score and then they get the scoop and the score and this thing's 38 17 it had just been tied and then you get another fumble while you're driving. So Nebraska's just got to be cleaner, got to be better. And think about it, too. I mean, there was not much dynamic play calling downfield. That's been harped on here since Saturday. You got some dudes, get them the football. But I love what Greg said, too, about a, a culture in that room of the wide receiver crew where you got to do it all. You're good enough to do it all. You got to be able to block. You have to want the block. That'll help you earn your way onto the field. Let's hear from from Will Honus here. Because I thought, man, if I'm giving out a defensive game ball and I thought the interior guys with Rodgers and, and Robinson and Stilly, I thought they played really good football. But, man, it was fun. Been waiting to see that Will Honus, right? That was fast and physical and tackled really, really well. And, and let's not discount Colin Miller either. I thought he had a great game as well. I thought Colin was good. I thought he was emotional. Mm-hmm. And, and I thought he was pretty high level. But I just... I hadn't seen Honus move like that. Oh yeah, and was so good on the blitz. Was vicious on the blitz. Probably could have been a safety, but here is Honus from earlier today. Will Honus thoughts on the Ohio State game? Some of those lessons. Uh, I'd say we were probably more physical throughout the game, especially against the run. I mean, most of their run game was either like quarterback scrambling or just a few leaky plays here and there. So I think we were physical enough. It's just about being more detailed and. Being smarter, getting off the field on third and fourth down was probably our biggest issue on Saturday. That was frustrating where Nebraska could have a negative play on first down, do well on second down, and it's it's either third and 15 or a second and long, and, and the greatness of fields would make something happen on a scramble. And he's going to do that to a lot of people. Here's Brendan Hymas. 
And uh, this is Hymas, you know, kind of what they're taking with them from the Ohio State game. I thought the offensive line played really well. I think everyone just needs to focus on doing their job and doing it 100%. I think if everyone has that mindset, um, our offense will work. I think it's when people start to overthink and, you know, just don't do their job 100% is when this offense doesn't work. Uh, you just need 11 guys doing 11 jobs to the best of their ability and everything will work itself out. But Let's uh, get a thought from Adrian Martinez uh, specifically here. Uh, his takeaway, and you, you've heard some of the leaders and voices today in the press conference Look, they're they're glad they played more physical, but fifty two to seventeen wasn't okay. We certainly are never okay with losing. I, I want to say that first and foremost. Um, obviously, some disappointment. Um, we weren't happy with the end result. With that being said, I think there were definitely some positives we could take away from it. Um, we thought we were moving the ball well on them uh, until we shot ourselves in the foot. So I think we um, we stunted a couple of those drives on our own. Otherwise, we were moving the ball pretty well. So um, we feel confident in that and where we can go from, from that game. Last thought here from Ben Stilley, your senior black shoot, your native Nebraskan. He was asked, you know, what what are you taking away from from Columbus? The the scoreboard is is what it was, and I mean that's the ultimate that's the ultimate indicator of how the game went. So I mean, a loss by thirty isn't necessarily a, a step in the direction we're, we're looking for. We'll wind down a Monday. Good show, fun show. Tomorrow, Rick Pizzo is going to be with us. Mitch Sherman, Barry Alvarez. The old Badger Barry. Uh, winding down to Monday with Hale Varsity, presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Miss us? Come here, brother. Give me a hug. Bring it in for the real thing. We're on call for you. Catch the podcast at HaleVarsity.com, the ESPN Lincoln app, or download them on iTunes. Saddle up, partner. Back to Hale Varsity Radio. Couple of final thoughts on a Monday. Hail Varsity presented by the Nebraska Lottery. Chris Schmidt, Elijah Herbal. Thanks for your input and interaction today. Recap at Ohio State. Uh, we'll move forward to Wisconsin tomorrow. Some thoughts on the Badgers. Catch Coach McBride, Jay Moore, Greg Smith, the ESPN Lincoln.com on demand section. Podcast for Hail Varsity on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play. Download us, give us a review. Uh, what you love, what you hate, all that good stuff. Critique. And uh, thanks again for uh, tuning in. Emails, chris at alevarsity.com. A reminder, there's over 1,500 crashes each year in Nebraska involving an impaired driver, driving drunk, buzzed or high. Never acceptable. Law enforcement officers working every day to stop it before any more people get killed or injured. If you're going to drive, don't drink. If you do drink, designate that sober driver. Get a ride share. Find a way to, to get home safely. A DUI costs you more than you think. This message brought to you by the Nebraska Department of Highway Safety Office. Coach Frost did, re, didn't did really get into to, to Deontay Williams or Cam Taylor Britt, but was asked from an appeal standpoint, we'll do cut 16 here because that's, that's on our mind, that's on your mind. What are you going to have in the secondary here Saturday? I don't want to talk about uh, discussions with the officials uh, in the league yet. I'm waiting to hear back from them again. I don't believe there's a process to appeal that penalty, so I think uh, we're kind of stuck with the outcome of it, whether we agree with it or not. We need to get some young guys involved, not just in the secondary, but in a lot of places. And I think as soon as those guys are ready, they have some. We have some guys with some talent to make us a better football team. So all those guys got to grow up, and and uh, some we're going to have to do it this week. Young guys played well. A lot of them did on Saturday. Who can you get ready from that wide receiver room for this Saturday? How big is this Saturday? Nebraska, Wisconsin, they come in number nine. They may be full strength. They may be third string uh, when it comes to their quarterback and, and Wolfie, as, as he's called. But here's Coach Frost on what Saturday is, the significance of it. 
it's game two. It's important to me. I, I want to play well against these guys. They're in our half. I think it's it, at some point we're going to have to turn the page and try to beat one of these teams that has, is really good in our half. Wisconsin's been the best team in, in the West for a while. Credit to them. But as, as far as it, it uh, relates to the entire season, it's game two. We did get a tough schedule. You know, getting the East champion and the West champion out of the gate. I think our team's ready to, to turn a page and take a giant step. Uh, but it, you know, we got to get some momentum. We got to get some wins, get some energy have everybody start believing it and knowing we can get it done and uh you know it's it's a little bit of a climb when when they give us the schedule that we have but our kids see it as a challenge and and they're going to play hard and, and do everything they can to try to uh compete with wisconsin got to see success elijah and you can have it on saturday yeah just a, a quick note on the badger quarterback situation this is from jeff Petrikus. Mm-hmm. uh no update yet on the second test of graham mertz but uh third string quarterback chase wolf was not at practice today <laughs> really so what are they going to do? Well, I mean, maybe going to bring in Melvin Gordon in disguise and run Wildcat. The emergency backup. You got to have some sort of emergency backup on the team that played quarterback in high school. So the Wolfie didn't wasn't there. I wonder if that's just a, a contact thing where he was precaution. in contact with Mertz precaution, he's in, but he's in bubble wrap. But he was not at practice today, so he's in bubble wrap somewhere. They're waiting on. They're probably waiting on other tests. Mertz was around people. Well, we'll talk to Barry Alvarez tomorrow. Back at you at 4 with Hale Varsity. Thanks.